Now let's take a look at creating our own React components, because as I said before, everything in React is a component. So fortunately, we've already got a very good example of what a component should look like if we take a look at app.js. So this is a React component, and this is actually a stateless React component, and that's because it's using a function. So this is also called a functional component. Now let's take a look at some of the errors that you might encounter when first working with a component. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just get rid of everything in the app component, and I'm gonna hit save, and you'll see that we now have a passing error unexpected token. And that's because whenever you create a component in React, that always has to return one wrapper element. So if I put in a div here and I save, you can see we get rid of that error. Now, of course, if you ever wanted to return multiple components, you're also gonna get an error, or multiple elements rather, you're also gonna get an error, error. So let's save, and now you can see that we've got a passing error, uh, so JSX should always be wrapped in one enclosing tag. So basically, if you ever want to create a component that's gonna return multiple elements, they should all be wrapped in a parent element. So this could be a header, this could be a div, this could be a nav, this could be whatever you like, uh, but you should always have one wrapper element and then all your other elements inside of that. And you can see that that gets rid of the error. But let's go back to a simple div. So I'm just gonna add in a div again. And let's get rid of that logo import. And let's take a look at creating our own component. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a component that will return the user's name. So we'll say something like a hello world component. So in the source directory, I'm gonna create a new folder and let's call that folder components. And inside of the components folder, I'm gonna create a new file and we can call that hello world.js. So whenever you create a new component in React, its default naming convention is to always uh, name your components with a capital letter. And in this case, because it's multi-word, it's capital letter with uh, camel caps. Okay, so let's hit enter. And now we've got our hello world file. The first thing we wanna do is import react from react. Now that we've got react imported, we can declare our components. And there are two different syntaxes for this. So the first is a stateless component. And then the second is a component that is using ES6 uh, class syntax. So let's take a look at the first syntax, which is the stateless component or the functional component. And that is the same as our app.js file over here. So we'll create a function. We'll call this hello world, open up our parentheses, open up our curly braces, and then that can return something. So let's just return an h1, and this can say, hello, Quinton. So we'll hard code the name in there for now. The next thing we need to do is obviously export that. So we'll go export default, hello world. And now we can head over to app.js, and in order to make use of that component, all we need to do is import that at the top of the file over here. So import hello world from dot slash components and hello world. So make sure to get your file path correct. And now that we've done that, we can use our component as an element. So basically like that. And I'm gonna use it as a single tag. So just hello world. Now if I hit save, you can see we've got an H1 returned as hello Quinton. So if you wanted to make this a little bit more dynamic, you can make use of props. So props in React are just a way to pass information from one component to another. So I'm gonna add in a prop of name and we can set this equal to Jared. And now that I've done this, I can make use of this prop in my hello world component by first accepting props as an argument. And then in my JSX, I'll open up some curly braces and we'll access the name property of this prop object or props object. And now when we save this, you can see, whoops, we don't actually have anything going on here. So let's take a look at this and let's just make sure I save this. Uh, so app.js wasn't saved. And now we've got hello Jared returned in the browser. 
And of course, whenever you change this name, then the output in the browser will change as well. So that's how you pass information from one component to another component, you'll be using props. Now let's take a look at declaring a component using the class-based syntax. So I'm gonna head back over to the hello world JS file and let's completely remove this function. And instead of using a function, I'm going to create a class and we're gonna call this class hello world because that's what we're exporting down here. And this is going to extend react.component. So that's why we import react at the top of our file here. Then the next thing we wanna do is add in a render function because this class should return a render function when we are gonna be returning some JSX. And this render function should have a return statement and this return statement can return our H1 along with hello and then the prop name that we wanna say hello to. So the way we access our prop when using a class-based syntax is a little bit different. Before we used to access it with props.name and you'll see that my IDE has automatically corrected this for me because we are using the class-based syntax here. So we have to access our props with the this keyword. So this props dot, uh, dot name and that will have the exact same output. So if I come back here and maybe change that name back to Quinton, you can see we still have hello Quinton output in the browser, but we have accessed that prop slightly differently using the class syntax. So those are the differences between those two syntaxes. You're gonna see both of them in documentation. All of those syntaxes basically do the same thing, but you're gonna see that's those differences in syntax wherever you look in documentation. And that is all I have for you in this video. So don't forget to subscribe, please leave a like, share this video with your friends, tell them it's the best React tutorial series you've ever seen, and I'll see you guys in the next one.